So I'm trying to save some recordings. As this is chapter 14 section for the power. So please uh, note down. I'm not sure what's going on here. Did I start from here last time? Did I stop here? Now power is the force times velocity. If you know the force of any uh, machine or a applied force, if you know the applied force and the velocity, then those two vectors you need to find out the power. So let me show you, for example, so <clears throat> one second I have to. I was talking about the big picture, the big picture of, of, of a power that you start from this basic formula. You have studied about the work done. U is also known as the, this is the symbol in our book, the work done. And the work done in a certain duration. So for example, if you move a block from this position to another position here, you have done uh, a work you have applied a force on this block and this has gained some distance uh, and and move to this new position once it moves to the new position how much uh, power you have uh, applied to the block so the rate of doing work is the power the rate of energy is the power time rate of energy is the power and if you take a look here that what is the work done work done is defined as the the product of force times the displacement okay and energy uh, this is our, our work done and the uh, power is actually the i'm sorry why did i do so this is the uh, can you correct this one this is the power the rate of doing work, time rate of change of work is the power. And if I do the math here, F dot D divided by uh, time T. So this is also the velocity. So the power is the scalar product of the two vectors, the force vector and the velocity vector. So then you can find out the the power of the work which you uh, applied on this uh, block. This is a big picture. Let's go into the small details. Another big picture, big picture. I want to mention one more thing here that you will be dealing with the energies and law of conservation of energy principle what is the conservation of energy principle that the kinetic energy which is half mv square and the potential energy the potential energy is due to the two important factors the one factor is the gravity for example if you have a block of mass you move it to a new position which is higher than the the datum line suppose this is our datum line which is and the new position is two then you have uh, moved it to a higher value higher position than the datum line if you move the block or any particle above the datum line you gain 
potential energy. And if you move it below the datum line, you lose potential energy. You will see in the in the in the slides that the datum line is a reference line, and when you move the particle above it, you gain kinetic uh, potential energy. When you move it below it, you lose potential. Energy. So in this case, it's a MGH. Another factor which is responsible for potential energy is the spring energy. Spring possesses energy which is known as the strain energy, elastic energy, but it is also potential energy. It's, it's not like a moving object like which is having certain velocity and it possesses kinetic energy. It's, it stores uh, in, its, uh, uh, in its material and that energy we call as due to the spring and that energy is written as K times delta X or X. Some books say just X, X minus zero. Initial position would be zero. X minus zero is delta X final minus initial displacement. So this is these are the three energies which you will be dealing with. And then the conservation of energy principle, the big picture for that one, it says before I show you that principle, I want to give you some fundamental example. The fundamental example which you have which you have been looking in your houses, the the clock, the pendulum, the pendulum clock is an old clock and this pendulum when it uh, vibrates oscillates about its mean position. This is the mean position or the datum line. This is the datum line. And at the datum line or at the extreme position, it has two energies potential energy and kinetic energy. And when you move it from position one, two, three, they just transfer. These energies, they trans transfer from one type to another type. For example, if I talk about type uh, position one, kinetic energy, which is also written as T. In our book, the this is written as uh, T big V S T is kinetic energy is the symbolic expression is T and for example I want to show you this is T1 half mv1 square can anyone tell me what is the velocity of this pendulum at position one zero good job so this is zero because and now the same but the potential energy is maximum Potential energy due to gravity is maximum because the height it achieves is the maximum height. So I'm going to write down the energy conservation. But remember, the sum of the sum of the two energies is always constant. In this case, we just have two energies. There is no spring involved in it. OK, there might be some cases when you have a spring, then I will show you there is another potential energy which is due to the spring half k x square. We will solve that problem today. And and over here, uh, we have kinetic energy as zero because this is, this is the extreme end of the uh, pendulum oscillation. How about position two? T2, V2 is equal to constant again. So this let's assume this is C. This is C. Now you will have to equate these two uh, equations. So per, suppose this is equation number one, equation number two, both have the constant values. Can I write down the law of conservation of energy principle like this? This is the law of conservation uh, or the conservation of energy principle. OK, and you will uh, use this equation in your problems. Today we will I will show you one problem or two problems how to use this energy conservation principle in those problems to solve the unknown variables such as velocity at position two. You can find our velocity at position two. For example, in this case, let's do this. In this case, the height is the left hand side. What is the left? This is zero. V1 is MGH. And T2 is half mv square v2 is zero so v square e equals 2gh that means v equals to square root 2 
जी ये दिस इज जस्ट अ सिंबॉलिक फाइनल वेलोसिटी एट पोजीशन टू यू सी आई जस्ट सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लम फॉर यू दैट हेल्प्स मी टू फाइंड आउट द अननोन वेरिएबल सच एज वेलोसिटी यू विल बी आस्क यूजुअली फाइनल वेलोसिटी फाइंड आउट द फाइनल वेलोसिटी यूजिंग कांसेप्ट एनर्जी कांसेप्ट सो दिस इज हाउ यू विल सॉल्व दोस प्रॉब्लम्स ओके नाउ लेट्स डू द टीनी टाइनी डिटेल्स After this, you should be able to answer the quiz question. The question number one. Can you answer the question number one? What do you suggest me? What should be the answer for quiz number one? One student says it is D. Do you agree with that student? I agree with him too. So the correct answer is all of the above. You agree? So now this is in this is the fundamental thing. If you understand this quiz, it will increase your concept level to the next stage. So now let me write it down here. Uh, D is the. How about second quiz question? Can you answer? Yes, that is correct. The kinetic energy it comes from the velocity. If the body is moving, it possesses kinetic energy, and that motion has the velocity. Velocity. If the velocity is zero, body is not moving; it is at rest. Power is a scalar value. You are right. Like a work done is a scalar. Rate of doing work is power. Okay. So uh, the dot product is always a scalar value. so for example here this is a force vector and velocity vector scalar product is the dot of two products to it gives you a scalar value but if you have a vector product how would you write it down you will write down this vector cross this vector this will give you another vector which is not a scalar so of course this is a vector so when you have a cross product the result is the vector but this is a dot product the result is a scalar value no direction is required how much energy so 5 joules 10 joules this is energy required to move one block from one place to another place you 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 understand what i'm saying so let's do let us see some uh, application where you can apply this knowledge to find out some unknowns for example for example this elevator it is going up into this apartment building and lifting some cargo and you see let me show you in a big picture so now the force is going up velocity is going up and the power is force times velocity agreed so power of this motor because the elevator is lifted by the help of electric motors okay so these motors they have certain pulley systems to reduce the power of you see how can we reduce the motor power look if this is a motor so we did that question before if this is a motor so you are lifting big cargo cargo weight is w you see i have reduced the power of the motor by w by 2 by adding a uh, one pulley just by addition of one pulley i have reduced the power from the required power to one half so this is the smart system when you are in our design engineering you will try to reduce the power requirement of the motor the less smaller the motor lesser is the cost okay and the uh, smaller cost effective de devices be people would like to buy so now uh, this is how you would uh, arrange the rope or chains there's that's why in the elevators we see a lot of pulleys uh, if you might have chance to see above the roof of the elevator you see a lot of pulley system attached with us to reduce the power requirement of the motor So now the next example I'm going to show you here is for this truck. This truck is going up uh, on a slope and for a given angle can you determine the speed of the truck knowing the power uh, transmitted by the engine to the wheels? Yes, we can do that. We know that power power equals to force times velocity. 
for velocity is given. Suppose velocity uh, can we, we have to find out the velocity. Suppose the force is given, you can find out the power. So some Trump trucks, I be, I think these trucks, they how much horsepower? Do you have any idea what is the horsepower of a of a, a semi truck like this one? One thousand, twelve hundred. But, but my car, 76 horsepower. <laughs> I'm just moving myself. No, you said the car. <laughs> okay, I have a Toyota Prius. It is, I was looking, yes, it's just 76 horsepower. And it's a gas saver. So, learn more. And <laughs> but your car, if you have a gas car, so it might be 180 horsepower. 300. That's a very big one. Sports car? No, uh, Nissan. Nissan? Oh. Is it? Yeah. That's good. But, um, okay, let's go over. We'll solve such problems for the cars in, in a bit. But don't drive too fast. If Even if your horsepower is high, drive slowly. Don't go above 70, 80. All right, this is the same thing, like the formula is given. How did you derive the formula? The same way, power is the time rate of change of uh, energy or the work done, and work done equals to force times the displacement vector. And if you take the time rate of change, d over dt of uh, r, then you get this formula. That's it. It's the same thing which I just mentioned. So this slide is explaining how to find out the power formula. And I tell you, this section is quite easy. You just have to plug in the force value, velocity value, energy constant. In this section, you, it is a grade booster. So you have, ex, um, you have a quiz next week from this chapter. I would suggest, I, I think I have submitted, I have explained what for, or problem you should practice. Did you see uh, uh, those problems? Yes. And suppose if you have a power, if you have power in watts, can you go back to horsepower? Yes, you can, because you know that one horsepower, please write this conversion, one horsepower equals to 550 foot pound per second. And that in this FPS system, and in SI system, it is 746 uh, watts. Okay, guys. So for example, for example, if I have a, a car which is delivering the output power of uh, 76 horsepower, how can you go from horsepower to watts multiplied by, multiplied by 746 watts divided by horsepower? Horsepower you cancel by this. What do you guys get? 746 times 76. Fifty-six thousand. Okay, that's good. Now there is another parameter which which the engineers are very interested in. Why? That parameter is known as, for example, this car. Suppose this car and this is wheels. These are the wheels of the car, and this has engine. Okay, the engine a, is uh, power is supplying power to the wheels. Okay, the output power and the power generated inside the engine. Inside the engine, like uh, it's an engine block. Have you seen engine inside? It's a block of engine. It has uh, cylinders, and cylinders have pistons. The power, the maximum power is generated above the piston crown, which is like power ignition. If you have a diesel engine, it's a heater, then diesel fuel start part. But mostly we have gasoline engines. So, okay, that is the power source. So how, if the power in the engine is suppose input power, input power, suppose it is uh, 200 horsepower, and output power to the wheels, the power coming from the 
uh, wheels. For example, force, force times velocity. It gives you it gives you 100 horsepower. So what is the efficiency? E epsilon or eta? Eta is power output over power input. Output power divided by input power. What is that? One half, correct? So it is 50% efficient car. Because the engine has lost its 50% of power in moving some difficult components such as crankshaft, other um, CV axles and bearings. So it has all. But usually a good engineer is the one which can reduce, who can reduce the power uh, and improve the efficiency. So we will see the real example. 50% is very, very low efficient engine. A efficient uh, car. Uh, look, OK, let's go to the power. I just explained it to you that the power output is always smaller than the power input. OK. You got my point. This formula, have you understood this formula? Epsilon equals to um, um, power output over power. You can also write down the same formula with the energy. Energy output over energy input is also known as the efficiency. And uh, <clears throat> why is it always low? Because some energy goes into dissipation. For example, friction losses, and that's why heat losses, sound losses, heat losses, chemicals, some other losses. So we have uh, friction losses. Have you understood the concept of efficiency? Yes. Should I solve one problem for you? OK, let's do one problem. But before I do one problem, this is the layout or algorithm, which part you should. It is saying find the resultant force and the velocity. Once you know the force and the velocity, just multiply them together to get the power. And power can also be found by time rate of change of energy and efficiency. So it's like this slide is like combining all the previous slides into one slide. And how would you start the problem, solve, solve the problem? It says what? Hmm. Energy input and removal. So energy out or removal and energy is the same thing like en energy or removal. How whatever you supplying, you are taking it out the same or it's just confusing uh, or number. Just remember energy input, which is in, in case of uh, engines, we have the uh, fire burning inside the uh, engine block. That's why we have in the exhaust gases. Sometimes we have a fire coming out. I, I see some fire, some engines, they have fire. OK. I, I, I also hear some bu busting, like a bomb blasting from the exhaust. They, they have special noisy uh, tail tailpipe just to uh, give bothers botheration to the neighbors they put a special exhaust too much problem yeah can you draw this diagram let us solve this problem is this font size clear to the last row students Yes, can you see this clearly? Or should I make it bigger? The 50 kilogram block is hoisted <clears throat> so by the pulley system and the motor. So it is being hoisted now. You have to move it. You have to, and how are you moving? Look. I'm going to, uh, as a problem solver, first of all, I would collect whatever I have. 
as a problem solver, I will collect whatever I have been given from the problem. That's a good approach when you are starting your problem uh, and the mass is given, the block which is being hoisted, it, the mass is given and the uh, motor has an efficiency. Efficiency is given, 80% efficient motor. At certain instant, like if you take a picture at a certain instant and uh, the P point, P point has been marked on the rope, okay? That rope, when the motor turns, that rope, that point goes towards the motor. When this go point goes towards the motor, the block is lifted upward, okay? So we have to find out, okay, what is the point P velocity? Velocity of point P is 12 meters per second and the acceleration of point P is six meters per second squared. Neglect the mass of pulleys and cables. Find out the power supply to the motor. You, you have to power, find out the power supply, not the output power. Make sure this is understandable. Power supply to the motor is uh, higher than the output power. Okay, you see my point? So I will say P in. This is what we have to find out. And how can we find out P out first? So P in can be found P out or P in. P out equals to force times velocity. <clears throat> in this case, I would say, I would say find out the force. And looking at the figure, looking at the figure, you see, uh, if I draw the force, this block, let me, let me zoom out a little bit. This block, which is being hoisted, it has its own weight. Okay, and there is another free body diagram. This is a free body diagram. What do you suggest me if this is tension uh, in the cord? This is also tension. So how many tensions should I draw on the free body diagram? Two times the T, correct? Because the, this uh, rope has been uh, and, and wrapped around the pulley. Okay, so this is W. So we have drawn the free body diagram. Now we are interested in this force and this force is actually the tension in the cord. Tension in the cord is that force. And you are moving this cord with velocity uh, 12 meters per second. And how would you find out the, how would you find out the tension? Let us go ahead and find out for the block. So I'm going to show you all the forces that are equal to mass times acceleration i would say acceleration of this block okay now suppose this is upward is positive for example upward is positive can i write down 2t minus w acceleration of the block can i write down like this Now you have to see, you have to see that how can you relate the two accelerations, block B and point P. So if I, if I give you a task, can you draw the rope uh, length of the cord on this diagram? So let us do this task. If I draw a horizontal datum line here, this is my datum, and this is the movable distance s a this is also movable this is s p can you guide me what should i write down for the rope length one student says 2 s a plus s p from this block you agree with him the last block you agree this is the length equation of the uh, rope of uh, length now from here, how can we relate the acceleration? First you take the first you take the first derivative, time derivative, d over dt, and second derivative of the same equation plus ap equals to z. So that's how you relate. So that means acceleration of the block A. In this case, uh, this is A B. So you can say A A or A B, they are the same things. I say I was looking for the block, so I put the sub B, but AB or AA is the same thing. So AP equals to minus AP over two. So if if AP is given, which is six, AP is given, which is six over two, negative. So let me ask you, negative means going up, 
uh, upward direction or downward direction? Can you guide me? The acceleration of the block is negative three. Negative three meters per second square. Will you tell me, will it uh, negative means downward or upward for the block A? Upward, because the direction of the this, our axis, SA axis is downward, which is positive. Downward positive, our ans answer showing negative acceleration. That's why we have to put, uh, uh, we have to say that negative means the block acceleration is upward. You understand that point? The block acceleration is upward. Uh, according to our this, so this is going up. Acceleration of this block A, it is uh, three meters. In magnitude, it is three meter per second square. You understood this point? And if this is the case, if this is the case, I want to ask you about this equation. Let me show you this equation here. This equation says, this equation says that upward is positive. Upward is positive. And then it means two times T minus mg. What is the mass? 50 kilograms is the mass, 9.8. Mass is 50 kilograms. Acceleration A is 3. So you will not write down negative in this equation because we have already assumed that upward direction is positive. You, you understand what the point? Yeah, negative. Look, this is uh, this is positive direction. Look, this one we have assumed this is also positive. This is also positive. But our equations shows me that this is not positive. Negative means it is against our uh, selected uh, direction, which is going down. But negative means the real the real acceleration direction is upward. You see my point? That's how we. Uh, our equation will find out the correct answer. Yes. This one. Then no, this is correct. This is just uh, adding two pieces of uh, um, rope. Yes. So the answer is uh, uh, correct. The, the negative will tell me that uh, our assumption was uh, wrong, but we have uh, a negative answer to show us that this is the real direction of our uh, acceleration, which is upward direction. OK, now let's find out the uh, tension in this code. Do you have your calculators open? Can you solve for this tension? One student says it is 320 up to how many decimals? 320? It's even? OK, that's good. So this is the force. Remember I told you the power output is equal to force times velocity. What is the velocity given? Look, this point is going down with a velocity 12 meters per second square, and now the force the the force the the load on the rope is 320 newtons so i can write down the formula power output equals to the tension times velocity what is the velocity 12 and i believe it is 3844 or 3842 43 Now we have done this work. Now we have still not completed the answer. The answer is find out the power supply to the motor. Efficiency is given. How can you go from power output to power input? Efficiency is equal to output power divided by input power. If you write it down, power A equals to 3843 divided by 0.8. Do you get 
4,800, something like that. Yes. Yes. Shouldn't be like power output is 3,800. Yeah, power output. But power supply to the motor is greater than the output power because of some internal losses of the armature and the magnetism. You see my point? So this is how you complete your question. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? Have you understood this problem? Will you be able to solve such problem in your coming quiz? You have a question? Let me ask you, that's a question. It's confusing there. Let me ask. First of all, let me explain how to find out the length of the rope. Length of the rope, you have to add every piece. You should not subtract. Remember this in mind. How can you do the subtraction? Like if I write it down like this, um, uh, 2SA plus uh, minus SP, this is a wrong way. So you have to add piece number one, two, three. And then that is the starting point. After this, whatever relation between VA and VB comes out, you have to follow that. Usually they are a negative sign because one goes, one block, they are dependent motion. One block goes down, other one goes up. Yes. Hmm. Acceleration A, but acceleration P is going downward, correct? Yeah. Why? Acceleration P should be 6. But the formula says it's a negative 6 over 2. You see my point? OK, now let's do the next slide. Let me show you the solution provided in our slides. Do you want to see that solution? OK, please try to answer the first quiz question. One student says it is C. Any other student? One student says it is C. OK, let us do it together. A motor pulls a 10 pound block. So the weight of this block, which is always downward, OK? The weight of the block is 10 pounds. And remember, the power says Power can be found by force times velocity. Both should be in the same direction. And this weight is perpendicular to the horizontal surface. And this tension, which is the uh, inclined. So I would resolve this, com this weight into two components and see which component is responsible or parallel to this one. So let me show you the free body diagram the, or the, uh, this equation. So I'm going to show you this one. So going up is positive. So T minus W sine 30 equals to mass times acceleration. 
can you tell me what is the acceleration looking at the problem? What is the acceleration of this block? Zero, because it is moving up at a constant rate. Constant velocity is zero acceleration. So the right hand side is zero. That's why it makes our life easy. T equals to W sine 30, which is five pounds. Do you agree with me? And now the power equals to five times five times velocity four. 20 foot pound per second. Do you agree with your professor? So the right answer is B. How about the next quiz question? Can you try answering the next quiz question? This block, this block, the last block. Today I want to hear first answer from the last block. There are many smart students sitting everywhere. The first row, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. What do you guys suggest me? What should be the correct answer? Yes. What is the answer? C. One student say it is C. B. D. And B. A. <laughs> That's a diplomatic answer. OK. <laughs> OK, let's solve this together. The question is a twin engine jet aircraft. It is going at an angle of attack of 10 degree. For example, this is the angle of attack 10 degree and the plane is going up. OK, this plane is going up. And and this has two engines. One is here. So the thrust thrust is uh, I would say power. I would say the force by each engine. How much force? Um, the thrust developed by each engine is thousand pound, thousand pound here. So T is here, T is here. So the net thrust is net thrust is two times thousand. Two thousand pounds of thrust is required, or it is being supplied by the engine uh, total, both engines, okay, to move the plane at a certain speed. What is that speed equals to? Two sixty. It is going at a rate of uh, 50, uh, 260 feet per second. Can you find out just the product of these two numbers? This is the correct answer. Answer D is the correct answer. You see my point? Now the catch or the, the problem here is the angle of attack. Students may get confused that where, where we have used the angle of attack. The problem is if you remember the formula of power that the both vectors should be aligned force vector and velocity vector. In this case, they are already aligned. So that was just a confusing number which we did not use in our answer. OK, you see my point. OK, let's do another problem. <clears throat> So for a moment, I want to pause this video. I have decided to start, start recording on the MS Teams. Sometimes students are not able to come. They are still able to. I did not even start the recording. Oh no. 
Oh yeah, 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 he's there. Stop, 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 stop.